Hi, I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. It's another beautiful day in our little slice of paradise, and it's my favorite time of year in my yard. Everything is growing, budding out, or blooming, and the days are still getting longer. The night's still getting pushed out. I love that. During the winter, it gets dark way too soon for me. Anyway, life continues with all its normal, everyday annoyances, but against a background of warm weather and sunshine, rather than cold rain and gusting winds. So I hope all of you are enjoying it as much as I am. I'm joined in the studio once again by Brookings Corps Executive Director Diana Carter. Oh, I forgot to say Brookings Corps Response. I know this thing. I just, I just stop at Core. I think at some point Core is just what everyone's yeah. going to... Yeah, I think so, too. That's what I hear it referred to a lot, and I well, keep thinking I need to do the whole... Also, no longer just Brookings, so oh. I have to think about that. Yeah, oh. I've been thinking about that. Oh, that's right. Uh-huh. We should probably do that now while we're doing planning. Yeah, yeah, that's true. For the, okay. I guess for those who don't know, since last time Tom did tell us that we didn't give background when we <laughs> talked about some background. Yeah. So true. Um, uh, Brookings Core Response doesn't just serve Brookings, so we're talking about maybe Curry Response. I don't know, but having to change the name or having oh, to dear. do another DBA. Oh, yeah, so I don't want to talk about that. No, I don't want to talk about that either. <laughs> but, uh, that requires thinking. Yeah, that's tomorrow problem. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Anyway, Diana Carter, she's here. <laughs> she's she, she's full blooded. She's right here. Um, the last time you were here. In addition to not giving people right. background, we got pretty philosophical. We were waxing poetical, and it was delightful. But we talked about living in interesting times mm. because that was a, a phrase that I had run across, and we, you know, were talking about the origin of that phrase mm. and the, the racist f- background, exactly, yeah. and the physical impossibility of actually pulling oneself up by one's own bootstraps which I thought was just, you know, because that's a phrase we use all the time. Mm -hmm. And we use it in seriousness. We expect you to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. It's a physical (laughs) impossibility. I remember looking that up and... uh, And being astounded, right? Like, wow, how did this get to be mainstream and nobody knew? I think it's part of Curry County education, so... (laughs) Probably, yeah. Um, We also talked a little bit about interdependency and the fact that all of us, no matter how independent and strong we may seem, have had some kind of support and help from family members, friends, maybe even some kind of social program, and that we do and should be able to rely on that help. That help allows us to weather difficult times and circumstances, to regain our footing, and to go on to prosper and thrive so that we, in turn, can offer support to others who find themselves in difficulties. And I know that both of us have had lived experiences with this and have gone on to be productive and helpful on our own. So it's specifically, I think, these experiences that foster empathy and allow us to imagine what somebody else must be feeling because we've been there, we've felt it, and it's rough. I think we've talked about ACEs before and the adverse childhood experiences, Mm -hmm. and then the flip side of that being the resiliency piece. And so somebody having, you know, a stable person in their life and and having more resiliency than others, which is not a badge of honor, (laughs) but uh, having more resiliency in their life, um, just that alone, right. um, kind of being a huge factor. And uh, and some people don't have, I mean, maybe they have one person. Well, I think that's what sparks the empathy. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, a lot of people go through trauma, but not everybody's able to come out of it um, on the other side with that kind of empathy. Right, right. Uh, or know what to do with it, I guess. Right. Yeah, I have a, I have a friend who... Um, I haven't seen her in, you know, 20 years or so, but we're on Facebook. And um, 
I was talking about uh, student debt being forgiven and, you know, yay, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Cancel that student debt. And, and she wrote back and said, why? I paid every dime of mine back. There's, that, yeah. there's no reason why those people shouldn't have to pay their student. And I thought, wow, okay, so was it easy for you to pay that back? Probably not, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you had to go through a certain amount of suffering and giving things up in order to pay back that mm -hmm. debt. Is that really what you want to foist on somebody else? Do you really want somebody else to have to suffer too just because you did? Yeah. I mean, I, I've paid half of mine back, and just that alone was a hardship. Oh, it's huge. At this point, I, I don't, so. Yeah, no, it's huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, from what I can see by some of the reports that come out, you're accruing so much interest all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah, that, I don't want to look at the interest. Yeah, you can't ever get ahead. You can't ever. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah, so I, you know, I just don't think that, that because I had to suffer, that means everybody well, else should too. And, you know, there's actually some really good um, stories and, and, you know, journalists have covered this in depth out there. I think there's actually a... Um, what is it? A, a last week tonight with John Oliver, where he they go pretty in depth mm -hmm. on um, student loans, and I would recommend people watch that because it's not really just about the loans they took out; it's about the interest and yeah, what's different in the interest nowadays from right then. So, right. Mm. yeah, yeah, makes me. There's a whole other talk. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. So we could talk philosophy all day, but let's talk about some of the things that your organization is doing to help and support. So. But you want to start off with the place here in Brooking? Turnkey? Yes. Yeah. So. I love Turnkey. Well, uh, Turnkey, for most people who don't know, Turnkey was a three and a half year project getting it to where it is now. Um, it started out some, I think this is CARES Act funding. It, it was was either, it really that? Mm -hmm. I mean, that feels like it was ages ago. I know. Ago. Uh, it was either CARES Act or, no, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, so that funding came down through the federal government to the states, and then all of the states used it for basically pushed it out to purchase motels for shelter. Um, and Curry County, you know, we struggled to get that off the ground. But currently... Um, we lost a mayor over that. Which we, yeah, a lot of things happened. Yeah, a lot of things happened. a long happened. three and a half years. Yep. Um, so right now, uh, that house we expect will be open in the next month. I mean, it's Amazing. kind of, we keep pushing the date out, but I guess that just happens. Uh, so it's five bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms, and right now it looks like we're going to use that house for women. And um, not. Um, this is not the domestic violence shelter, so this won't be people who are escaping domestic violence because we don't have that kind of training and uh, skill set, but it's for women who are just in general public looking for housing. Also medical respite, so people who have... Um, I think in the shelter, we served probably eight or nine people for the last couple of years that had to have surgeries. And so that's the only way sometimes people can have a surgery because the doctors won't even sign off on it unless they have a bed to go to. So that'll be some of the bed there, right. Uh, right. working with the CCOs, which is the coordinated care organizations. Tom's just forever in my head I now. Know. I know. He hates those mm. abbreviations. I do too. So I appreciate that. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't catch myself doing it. Um, so working with the CCOs, probably eventually working with the hospital. Because um, I know you've been in discussion with the hospital about that, but it, that's yeah, another but long, long process, right? That, those are very long processes. Yeah. Getting hooked in with the major medical clinic is a pretty mm -hmm. big deal. So we're not there yet. Right. Um, but we do have uh, street medicine, so that'll kind of help support our our. Um, I guess she's primary care, but she's our medical director. Mm -hmm. So she'll help oversee some of those beds for turnkey if they're medical. And it's transitional housing, right? The Yeah. Well, I mean, some of them may kind of appear to be more shelter beds, mm -hmm. but that's just because they'll have shorter term stay. But we're hoping everybody stays for transitional housing. Mm -hmm. So ideally, everybody would stay there until they get into right. permanent housing if that's what they want. Right. But some people really just need it to get medical stuff done. So isn't that interesting hmm. that they that 
that they can't get their medical stuff done because well, they don't have a, a lot place. you can't get done. You can't get hospice if you don't have an address. You can't get um, home health if you mm-hmm. don't have an address. You can't get, I mean, yeah, just medical services in general. But right. um, there's a lot of other public services and social services you can't get if you don't have an address, too. I mean, we could make a whole talk out of that. Right. Um I think we have talked about it. We have, yeah. Before. <laughs> um, driver's license. Like, how do you get a driver's license? Yeah, you well, there's special forms and all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that was interesting about the shelter is last year, we had someone in the shelter who had historically never used social services ever. And, and I mean, later found out they really didn't need the shelter, mm-hmm. so that kind of sucked. But um, what was interesting is when we had to do the intake, giving all of the personal information was a really big deal. And and it is. It's a lot of information that even we don't even ask for a lot. Like mm-hmm. um, we don't even ask for social unless you're in a housing program. And so, uh, but also myself personally having used services, I've never, I, I, I haven't considered how uncomfortable it is because I've had to give it up so much that right. I could list all of my children's social security numbers and um and ohp numbers oh my god because that's how often i've given written it down on forms right um so i i didn't think about it a whole lot but um i mean she really pushed back to the point where we didn't we didn't collect that piece of information Mm -hmm. it's not really a big deal but you know obviously we have to have that for everybody um but that was kind of um interesting to me that yeah people don't know how much information they that um when you're out there like how much you have to give up just to get basic stuff there's a lot of lack of privacy a lot of lack of Uh privacy i mean not not just that you don't have a door you can close but literally people are coming into your life to yeah get information yeah like you you probably would you know I was thinking if I did one of our intakes on you, you know, there's probably not a whole lot you would squawk on, but it's it's inv- invasive just because of course, of it. yeah. So yeah, and yeah, and if you don't know the people who are taking the information, right. and you know, maybe you're coming in in crisis. Oh yeah, no. it's not it's great. Just yeah, it's yucky, yucky. So uh, and sometimes we have specific grants to ask, um, like specific information we don't already collect. Mm-hmm. And I pretty much just push back as often as I can because right. that would mean, one, we have to go back and collect all that info from everybody else. And two, it's just, I mean, it's just more yeah, work on us. Exactly. So. Okay. So turnkey. So turnkey, hopefully by the end of a month or so. Will yeah. Be so open. we're thinking early July. Great. Yeah. That's so wonderful. And that was a project that I think that was your, like, first big one, wasn't it? Uh, well, that and Measure 110 right. at the same time. Right. Mm-hmm. At the, of course, at the same time. They're all, yeah. <laughs> so it's really nice to see it, you know, coming coming full circle. Well, and uh, we're going to have our open house there, although it, that one's not open to the public. That one's um, invite. Mm-hmm. So, But you'll be there. Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> Um, okay, so, and you've got something up in Gold Beach. The yeah, so the motel. This is the eighteen units of low income housing. So what's today? The tenth? Is Let's it? See. No. It's the ninth. Okay, no. so two days. Um, I think we'll close escrow. Two days. I should probably not say that because I really just <laughs> jinxed it. But um, yeah. So I already signed all the paperwork. I'm Excellent. I'm already like good on my end. Good. Uh, so this one is 18 units, two two bedrooms. I think it's nine one bedrooms and seven efficiency units, which is just tiny. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a motel, so imagine how small the yep. little units are. Yeah. Um, so they're all going to be low income housing. That's um, I think 60 percent of AMI, which is area median income for those who don't know. That's just basically they take a uh, census of all of the income in the area and they get a median income. So wh- what that means is that it's 60 percent of what the average income would be around here okay. or the median income. Right. Right. So we'll have 18 units up and I think we're going to be looking to get vouchers on those, which means that people will pay 30 percent of their income. Uh, this 
project is a veterans project, so it'll be uh, veterans only. But the goal That's is wonderful. To, well, the goal is to expand on that because mm-hmm. we really need senior housing, but. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of our first project. Mm-hmm. Well, it's exciting. You know, <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> hopefully not the last, but... <laughs> and Gold Beach is a, a different kind of community than Brookings. Uh, well, I mean, their city government runs a lot different mm-hmm. than ours here. Um, I prefer working up there right now. Like the city administrator has really supported us and the mayor has supported us and some of the counselors. Mm-hmm. Um, and just pretty much everything for the project that we're working on has gone through right away. Whereas we've we've definitely struggled with Brookings just getting um, paperwork back sometimes. Yeah. And I I know it's all procedural, but it does slow things down. Oh, so. absolutely. And to know that the the city council up there is at least not against you. Well, they're more than that because they're leaning forward. So they're kind of trying to figure out what are all the different ways they can get different types of housing mm-hmm. from all levels, from campground to RV parks to co-ops. I'm, wow, that sounds like governing to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and planning. Yeah. <laughs> what a concept. I think they've even changed some of their uh, city ordinances in the last couple of years to be more progressive towards... Um, affordable housing. Wow. And then uh, some of those were optional too. So there was some state guidelines that came down for cities of like 10,000 or more, Mm -hmm. but the city of Gold Beach adopted as well, just um, optionally. So that's impressive. Well, it certainly makes me want to work more with them. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, Brookings. We're talking lots of money here. (laughs) Yeah, that's the thing. It's like uh, three and a half million dollars. So that's quite a bit. And and just to be clear about that, so three and a half million dollars of state money? Oh, this is our money. This is... But I mean, where did it come from? So this is from the General Housing Account Program. So GHAP is the name of the grant. The General Housing Account Program comes from when we build here, those fees go to the state. And then the state puts that into the general housing account, and then low-income housing comes out of it. Not all low-income housing. There's so many different types of grants for low-income housing. But this is one, and specifically this this funding is our local dollars. And Curry County hasn't gotten a dollar back in like 30 years. So 30 years? So if you did all of the if you did all the math for all the builds over 30 years. I mean, we're owed a lot more than three and a half million. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and the reason we haven't gotten it back is because nobody's asked. Nobody's applied. Or... Yep. I, I that's. Just, uh, I mean, it doesn't make you well, but also having yeah. applied, I can understand why. <laughs> right, because it's not easy. Uh, that's putting it lightly. Yeah. 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 I mean, I jumped in very stressed out. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. sure Adam has been as well. Yeah. And especially at the last minute. But the point, the point is that the money is actually there. There's actually money available. And the only way we're going to get it is outside for-profit agencies that have the time and the capacity to handle that kind of grant or or bolstering small agencies like CORE and others who could potentially have the capacity for that. So there's really only two ways that we're going to get that money back into the economy here. And, um, you know, I certainly it's not profitable for the for profit company. So it's just not going to happen. Right. So th- this really is the only way. Right. Um, is somebody just stepping up and doing it. And it's it's intriguing to me because, you know, I, of course, am watching what the Board of Commissioners is doing on a. Unfortunately, on a county so level. Sorry for you. I know. Um and, you know, they're trying to balance a budget that hasn't been balanced in years, as far as I can tell, except that, you know, they steal money from the road fund mm-hmm. or, you know, try to pass a, you know, a levy that yeah. <laughs> taxes the homeowners, which goes down in flames. Yeah. The money is right there. Well, it's, it's I mean, the money is there to balance the budget. So I I was told that Curry County doesn't go for grants. Is that true? Well, 
I don't know if Curry County goes for I mean, grants, the government itself. But, but what I know is that Sheriff Ward said at the um, voters forum that he did not. He did but he not. does. He went for a search and rescue grant for he um, Curry Health Network. He said he doesn't have time to go for it. Well, I was there, so. Okay. So I'm just saying, right, yeah. if you have a grant writer. Well, that one was a really easy grant, too, so that's probably why. Right. But but if the county had somebody who wrote grants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. Imagine that. Almost like a, uh, what do you call that, economic development person. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what to think. Yeah. Like the balanced budget could actually be a reality. Yeah. Shocking. I know. Okay, so that's Gold Beach and the VETS program. Now, is this is this long term housing then? Yeah, that's permanent housing. Okay, that's so. Great. Oh, and and Housing Authority also purchased a property up there too, nearby ours, and that's going to be senior and and dis- I think it's for senior and people with disabilities. So, um, wow, and probably some families I imagine will be in there. But excellent. The, I think it's like twenty six units. So wow. I mean, it's great. When you think about that means... But also that be- in Gold Beach, too. Right? So between the two the two projects, that's like 30-some... Well, and probably like... 40-some. Probably like $8 million. Yeah. I don't know how much Matt and right. the Housing Authority got and what they're working on with that, but that that that's all going to be in Gold Beach. So, yeah, bro, I wish we could work Brookings. at Brookings. <laughs> Uh, Hello, planning commission. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and what about Pier House? Um, So this is the new office space. This is going to be over in Harbor. So it's actually right next to our other office. It's just across the highway. Mm -hmm. But you haven't been up there yet. Well. Have uh, you? I haven't been up there since you acquired it. Oh, but you've been in there as Calor. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, Well, so that's... Um, probably about the same size as the office we're in now, but we're going to keep both offices. So that's Pier House Navigation Center. That'll be where all of our medical services and walk-in services are. Once, um, I think we're going to open it August 1st. Great. But I'll definitely, and that one will be, that we'll have an open house at the end of July. That one will be open to everybody. And I think, well, I'll just commit Steve to it now. His, his band is supposed to be playing. Ooh. So, okay. I'm just going to throw it out there just to reinforce that that's <laughs> happening. Um, but yeah, so that that'll be the end of July. So your your medical will be over there. Medical? Mm-hmm. And and then any other services. service. So Pier House will be over there and then all of our navigation services. So Great. that's why it's Pier House Navigation Center. Yep. Good. Yeah. Good. And so you'll actually have a space that you guys who are doing admin can be quiet in. Well, or, yeah. <laughs> or or not quiet, but, you know, at least be able to focus. Well. <laughs> oh, no? <laughs> well, well, we needed to expand because our team went from, like, four last year to, like, you know, eight or something this year. And then so we needed to expand, and we thought we'd have probably four or five over there and a few at this office. But we're up to 12 today. <gasps> so it's not going to be as quiet as... I'd hoped. (laughs) That's amazing. Um, And then we're supposed to hire four more in the next um, couple of months. Seriously? Yeah. So I think we're going to run out of room (laughs) before we've got the room. I think you've already run out of room. Yeah. Wow. Are those for programs, those Uh people? Wow. Mostly housing, but also um, peer house and our health services, too. I mean, everything. Yeah. It's all expanding. Yeah. Excellent. Mm-hmm. So, any other programs that are well in the works, uh, there's, or there's two more projects that we're looking at, but I'm not sure about one of them. So, mm-hmm. one is a second house for um, kind of be like a turnkey 2.0, mm-hmm. and that would be we'd be able to use that house for um, women and families, and then the front house we'd be able to use it for men. So, Ooh. that's a possibility. And then the other one was um, there's a potential for some transitional spaces for RVs and mm-hmm. motorhomes mm-hmm. in the county. Mm. Um, but that's kind of an early conversation, so I'm not going to gonna throw it out yet because I don't want to jinx it. Yeah. Right. But um, we're talking with Housing Authority and 
other agencies about that. Excellent. Good. Good, good, good. So one of the things that, you know, came to my mind when I was working on this outline was the the rainbow rock pullout. Uh-huh. Um you've seen all of the yeah, RVs just by. and yeah. Um it's not a good look. Huh. Right? Well, <laughs> It's not a good look. I'm for sure the things. I'm I'm sure the city of Brookings is squirming. So I think everybody's squirming at this point. I mean, I I I know that the I know that law enforcement has been contacted and mostly they're they're all waiting for some kind of a decision about what's so that's, legal and that's what's state, not legal. Though. That's state oh, that's ODOT. That's ODOT. Right. Yes. But so the sheriff's not, is not doing anything. Obviously, I don't nobody think they from. Can. No, I don't think they can either. But ODOT's not really doing anything either. And I, I think, I mean, at one point they, they told people they had to move because they were going to clean the area. Yeah. Actually, ODOT's been really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the time when they're working around the camps, they actually contact us personally. Nice. Um, and, Scott from ODOT has been really helpful. And then uh, when they do have to go out and do any work, like they actually contact the people that are out there instead of just putting up the signs. Nice. Um, and then, you know, they don't bother them when they go back. So right. ODOT, I've at least had a good response with. That's probably why they're not doing anything, because I don't think they can do anything out there. So ODOT wouldn't waste their time with that. But Well, somebody brought up the... Um the i the the fact that one of the cities in Oregon Madras I think mm-hmm. um there was an article about them uh they were going to close their homeless camp and then set up a designated spot uh I didn't really read the article Wait, was, I just oh, okay. saw like the headlines was it and, tents was it RVs do you know it was tents from what I could see um whether there are RVs in Included in that in that camp, oh, I have no idea. It. Okay, yeah, um, but the but the clue is in the second part, which is that they are setting up a designated right. spot. So, uh, you know, the the problem with trying to kick the can down the road is that the Ninth Circuit Court has said, yeah, you can't. you can't. You're not allowed to kick it down the road. You know, if you have a spot for for unhoused people, great. Then you tell them where that spot is as long as it's, you know, a good spot. It's accessible to everything that they need. It's got toilets and showers. And I mean, come on, right? Well, because outside of that, I mean, you'd be assuming that they don't belong there. So Right, right. And there's all this talk about, well, we've got all this, you know, national forest land. Let's just, you know, tell them to <laughs> go go off into the forest, Right. Like, oh my God. Okay, really? You, you okay. Well, <laughs> you don't understand, right? Well, some do go off into the forest, but they, there's yes. not facilities for that and there's That's not right. maintenance for that. And so they just end up staying out there. And uh, I mean, some of the camps that we've gone to, I mean, there's a couple that we've gone to that have been pretty um, well maintained, but not usually. Mm-hmm. So that's not really a. Also, there's no transportation out there. So no. they just go out there and they get stuck out there. Um, we've had to go out and get multiple vehicles. Um, I mean, nobody wants that. No, it makes more work than, I mean, it it makes more problems than it solves. You know, that's just not, it's not a workable solution. Well, yeah. So I, the city, I know, is has enacted the new, um, what do you call it? The, the oh, yeah, the ordinance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Which we talked about last time, but then we didn't talk about what it was. Right, right. So, do you, you were there. You were at the meetings. Do you want to talk about it? Oh, you know, I would if I had notes, yeah. but, you know, it's it's been several weeks well, now. Well, I read it originally and then, um, you know, went to the first workshop and then I couldn't go back because they're not going to listen to anything I had to say. But no. um, I do know that it pretty much excluded all the parks in the city. Yes. But it didn't exclude Mill Beach for some reason, um, which oh. I, you can sleep on the beach anyway, but the the right. area nearby Mill Beach. Right. So I'm not sure if they left that off intentionally, but I excluded Azalea Park, um, Bud Cross Park, 
um, all the parks, Stout Park, yeah. yeah, all of them. But I thought that that's the only place that people are legally allowed to be is the park. So, because mm. that's the only city land. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's the only um, public land in city limits. Right, so, right. I I'm curious to see what's going to happen with that now. Well, and when you look at the at the ordinance, it's I mean, it's it's legalese, right? It's it's hard to understand. It's hard to read. I mean, it's just, you know, blah. But it goes on and on and on about where you can't be. Okay, mm -hmm. You can't be here. You can't be here. You can't be here. You can't be here. Nowhere does it say where you can be. Well, I think that, uh, well, I know that Cora and myself um, have reached out to the city to ask that. And the only response that we've gotten is that just to read the ordinance. So I, I guess I'm not going to answer that. No, I would suggest that that's probably true. They're not going to answer it. Yeah. But that, you know, I just, I don't think this is rocket science, you know? I think you can kind of go, okay, if you're telling people where they can't be and aren't telling them where they can be, have you actually solved a problem? No. No. No, no you haven't solved a problem. Well, I'm... The city of Gold Beach is willing to work with us to find a space. They have a campground right now, um, or they did have a campground. I don't know if it's still running, mm -hmm. but it was not um, functional. Mm -hmm. There was not like safe spaces for people to be. It was right down near the beach where the wind was. I don't, had you been down to Gold Beach where the campground is? I don't where I don't know where it is where okay. the campground is. Where I I know where the visitor center is. Is um, that close? No, it's no. on the other side okay. down. Near, um, no, near it's port? down kind of near where the port is. Okay. So when I went down there, there was probably about three or four tents um, down there, but there was an older woman who was in, uh, well, I mean, I don't think she had a wheelchair, but she definitely had at least crutches. Um, and when she was getting out of her tent, the tent kind of blew off. Oh, no. So that's the designated area that they have. And I'm not sure who picked that area. And I'm not like ragging on the city i guess they're at least they're trying to do something but that's the area they picked um well, at least that's what when i went and saw so i think what they're trying to do now is find some alternative spaces I but i don't think they're trying to find that to run people off i think they're trying to find alternative spaces so people actually just have a space to be but the city of brookings is obviously just trying to push people out and i think that that's going to end up in a lawsuit not, yeah, that, I, not that the city cares. cares about lawsuits obviously not yeah yeah, I, I remember um, Andy Martin was saying at, at one of the last meetings, Councillor Martin was saying that um, he, in from the people that he's been talking to, he says the overwhelming majority support the camping ban. And I'm like, who have you been talking to? Wait, Andy Martin? The counselor? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. The majority of the people. The one that I in, ran against me. Yeah. And yeah, the majority of people are uh, in Brookings would support the camping ban or supportive yeah. of the camping van, uh, ban. So how many people has he actually talked to and who are they? <laughs> well, I mean, we kind of saw this, I guess, um, at the beginning of the pandemic when Jake started reaching out. I think people don't reach outside of their circle mm -hmm. when they're on the city council. It's a yeah. really homogenous group of people. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it's just odd to me that, you know, if if you if you ran for government saying that you were going to represent, mm -hmm. do you really only represent one ha little handful of people? I mean, even even assuming that that it is the majority, is that who well, you, you represent know. is just the majority? But there's about? an election coming up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I'm not running. Don't like I'm not. I'm going looking for at sure. you. No, nope, not <laughs> happening. But uh, I definitely think we should be encouraging some people to step up right now. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because we definitely need some. We need some new blood. So, uh, you know, one of the things about the the pullout Rainbow Rock, um, evidently there are quite a few vehicles there that are disabled, that mm -hmm. they, they actually can't move. So it would be a project, I mean, to 
to find a place that would work as an alternate site to be able to move people's vehicles. And, you know, those, those RVs are their home. Well, there's a couple of locations. Um, one actually is state-owned, um, which is near the Harris Beach State Park. So there's that rest area. That rest area across mm-hmm. the street. So the, the yeah, And I don't think the state even wants that. No. So the state's trying to offload that, but I think it has some restrictions on what you can use it for. Hmm. But it is set up for RVs, cars, mm-hmm. um, camping, campsites. And it, I think you could put showers in there too. So that would be a really good location. There's another location up near um, Gold Beach, actually just north of Gold Beach that um, I can't tell you where it's at, but mm-hmm. um, that was one I think that either Tammy had identified or Beth had mm-hmm. um, that had some sites. Well, we definitely need something here. I mean, the, the, this is where the services, well, theoretically, this is where the services are. I mean, aren't aren't there services here right no, no, now? No, no. <laughs> well, I mean, there's you, okay? <laughs> Core response is here. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, there are, and I, Brookings kind of has the kind of highest, um, population down right. here of people in need of services and so it makes mm-hmm. sense for it to be down here but I also would like other um, agencies to step up mm-hmm. throughout Curry County and um, especially the agencies that are outside the area that we're supporting Curry County you know I think I actually heard from Orca recently so yeah that they're there wow. um, okay I think they're doing energy assistance now um, okay. adapt is kind of swinging away as far as mental health and the addiction services go. They're not doing much. well. They are, um, but I I also know the Bay Area First Step is coming in to support as well. They've been here. Um, they've been out of our office the last couple of weeks. Okay. So, and and that is for behavioral and, and that's mental health? addiction. Okay. So they oh, can get great. people can get ASAMs, which is ACM. Well, yeah, no <laughs> ASAM, which. Sorry, I don't know what that stands for. Um, I can't. But help it's you. an assessment for okay. addiction. I just, so let's say that the A stands for assessment. Okay? Sure, it does <laughs> not. But okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, so anyway, they can come down and get assessments for mental health and addiction um, and substance use services. Great. So uh, Barry First Step's been coming down weekly. They go to St. Tim's. I think they're going to be co-locating at our new office. And I don't know what Prime Plus is, but there's some new peers that they have, peer support services mm-hmm. that they have for Curry County specifically. So mm. they've been here pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, my staff recommend them. So wow, mm-hmm. that's excellent. So twelve, really twelve. Yeah, we've got twelve staff. <laughs> what? What am I looking at? <laughs> so. Okay. So again, the the Rainbow Rock thing because it it it's. For me, it's emblematic of what the issue is, that people want them gone. People want the homeless gone, out of sight, out of mind, but aren't coming up with the solution to put them somewhere. Well, I think the average person doesn't have the solution for that, so... I think this is probably one area where everybody needs to get in the room and have a conversation, yeah. but I haven't seen that happen here in Curry County. No. Um, I will say that we do have the homeless task force here, and I, I know most people don't know what that is, but it is a group of agencies that are working on housing here in Curry County. Um, we don't have local government officials there, which has been, I mean, for us has been productive, but I think that the conversation would move quicker if we had government officials there, especially when we're talking about conditional use permits and right. um, bl- zoning and land use laws. So right. Right. that would be helpful. We do also don't have a lot of just um, public citizens there. And I mean, that there's that's I guess that's a double-edged sword because we don't have public citizens there, so we don't have a lot of public input. Um, but we also don't deal with the NIMBY attitude mm-hmm. um, that we have dealt with through all, all of our other projects. So I, I guess that's give-take. Well, 
And and you know the the reality is that you don't have a real solution unless everybody can live with it. Uh-huh. Because if if there's a group of people who can't live with the well, solution, I mean it it can get really ugly. Yeah, but you can't base your I mean, we we can't base our programs and projects on what people want to see. We wouldn't have anything. We right. would be gone. We would have moved out of I would have moved out of Curry County. So yep. Yep. Uh, I, I also think, I, I can't remember who it was that said uh, uh, unlimited intolerance leads to the elimination of tolerance. Oh. Yeah. So huh. you can't really right. um, just tolerate that forever. Right. Right. So I, I don't, I, we, we don't ask for... Um, we do ask for input, public input on our projects, but I guess we don't solicit it in that way. Certainly, after the Turnkey Project, we don't. Yeah, but yeah, because that wasn't that wasn't pleasant. <laughs> no. Um. So, wonder what's going to happen with um, the grants pass thing. Have you been following it? Um, the last thing that I knew was that the Supreme Court was going to come out with a decision towards the end of June. Oh, okay, yeah. But that's... Yeah, I haven't heard anything on it. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine it will impact a lot, I'm thinking. Well, um, the city of Brookings case is probably going to end up at the Supreme Court as well, so... Do you think? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sure it will. The the one that... That just got the Saint settled. Timothy's the Saint case. Timothy's one uh-huh. that, that got settled in favor of Saint well, Timothy's. You've been, I mean, you've been at more meetings than I have, so I guess you would know what the city council's thinking. But I missed the last two. Okay. Well, I have a feeling they're probably going to appeal that because it sounds to me like they think they were in the right. So and that's probably going to end up at the uh, um, Supreme Court as well. And the Luba decision, of course, is you know that that appeal. No, I did. What what happened with Luba? Well, they haven't decided. It's, Is this the Aga Kemp? No, no you're no, talking no. about Saint Timothy's. Yes, there are two. There are two separate. Oh, things. right, right, right. There are two separate things. So, so the one, which was the feeding ministry, that's the one that got decided. Um, um, right, right, in favor of Saint Tim's. The ordinance that okay, what's Luba for everybody that doesn't know Luba's. Um, Land Land Use use Board of Appeals. Mm -hmm. And that's for when the city said you can't have any services at St. Timothy's. So that that lawsuit is still happening? It's, I don't think it's a lawsuit. I think that St. Timothy's appealed to Luba, appealed the abatement Mm -hmm. issue to Luba. So I think we're waiting, you know, we're waiting to hear about that so but yeah i mean you know hundreds of thousands of legal dollars uh, i think it's like somewhere around 600,000 is what i heard yeah cuz the they had to pay for st timothy's lawyer fees as well so yeah yeah, um, yeah i think <laughs> i had seen a figure um that was sent to me and it was $300,000 and that was before St. Timothy's mm-hmm. um, lawyers submitted Which, their bill. I don't know who has better lawyers, but it sounds like St. Timothy. <laughs> so probably a hefty bill. So is there anything else that's going on with CORE that we should know about? <laughs> well, other than we're going to be hiring? Yeah. I'll, I'll make the announcements, I'm sure, when we yeah. start hiring. But no, I mean, right now everything's going pretty well. The Programs are pretty developed, so I, we do have, um, so that we have the street medicine program and resource navigation, which are health programs. And I guess for those who don't know, resource navigation is really just case management to help people get into healthcare services and I guess whatever, because sometimes people just come in for an ID card, um, but it could be all the way up to substance use services. Um, and then there's Peer House, which is our walk-in services, and that is four days a week, Monday through Thursday, nine to three. And that's hygiene closet, clothing closet. And then once we move to the other center, we'll have showers and oh, laundry. Wonderful. Um, 
well, not right away. So that yeah, was, that's that's yeah. wonderful. Uh, so that that location will probably have um, quite a bit of traffic there. So Ooh. that'll move it away from the office that we're at now. And we'll still have the housing services. Right now, we only have rapid rehousing, which that's just getting people, you know, first, last, and deposit into housing. So we don't have, like, homeless prevention. That went to um, CLASS, which is a different community action agency. So if people are going to be evicted, we we didn't get the funds for that. So okay. we have to redirect people. Um, and but, where is that agency? It's Klamath and Lake Community Action. So Klamath County, Lake County. So if you're being evicted, uh huh, you have to go to Klamath. No, County. no, they come here. But it it's just kind of one more example of the resources being held outside of the community. But mm-hmm. you know, I like Class. I think they've done a really good job. I just it's mm-hmm. easier to be nimble when the funds are here. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of why we were going for those funds and. Um, they ended up going to class. So, but we have the rapid rehousing funds. So that's pretty much, I mean, as far as our housing programs go, the shelter and transitional housing um, will be open in July, hopefully. And at one point you were talking about having a mobile shower. Yeah, that's the one that's going to be at Pier House. Okay. So the mobile shower will take up, this is why we're kind of covering the county now. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be up there with our housing services like Port Orford and Gold Beach, but the shower um, will actually be half day in Gold Beach and half day in Port Orford twice a week. Wow. So, uh, and and laundry. Because mm-hmm. I don't think Gold Beach and Port Orford have had, I think they had showers when Coast Community Health was open, but that's been closed for a while now. And that seems to be one of the big things. You know, I I think about what it would feel like to not have a place to take a shower. Yeah, we were and, just talking about that today. Uh-huh. Right? And because I bet you went camping, didn't you? Well, yeah, but that's not, I was talking about it with my sister because okay. she doesn't have like running water. Oh, dear. So um, so we were talking about um, just sort of taking that for granted. Yeah, and, exactly. Like I'm sure I do to some extent, but having been out there for a long time, like that was definitely one thing that I uh, missed the most yeah. was showers, laundry, just feeling clean yeah. in general. Right. Uh, so I, I, I don't take it for granted. I don't take very long showers, but when I do, I enjoy that. Mm. So yeah, I. No, it makes a huge difference. I mean, if I don't shower for mm-hmm. two days, I feel like. I don't really want to talk to anybody. You know? Yeah. It's like, I'm really dirty. I need to take a shower before I talk to you. When when uh, we opened the shelter this year, there was one person that went in there that a lot of people, mostly clients, thought shouldn't have went in there because I they felt, I guess, this person didn't deserve to go in. A shower? No, the shelter. Oh. Um, yeah. No, that'd Sorry. be a whole other story. <laughs> Uh, you don't deserve a shower. Yeah. But so we brought the person in because mm-hmm. really everybody, you know, our whole team felt like this was the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, it feels weird to be holding um, that kind of a resource. Yeah. And to be picking and choosing. So uh, I just remember she wrote me a note after the first day and just and basically was explaining how that's like the first time she had had a shower in like a year. And um, like, I mean, I didn't go a year without a shower, but I, there were definitely times I went a long time. Um, and so that's that's kind of like just not having access to all of those. Um, I mean, that's probably my biggest fear is like n- not having a choice in it and being homeless again. Mm-hmm. So like the people living out at the Rainbow Rock Park, like, there are a couple people that um, just kind of want to be on their own and do their own thing. But I've talked to most of those down there. In fact, um, I think it was like six months ago we went out there and talked. There's there's more now, but um, like we know a lot of the people that are out there. And some of those people actually were residents here. But um, I mean, most of them don't want to be out in their car. For, for sure, there's a couple of older folks out there right now in their car. And one of them's in a pretty small car um, with with their dog. 
And so they definitely don't want to be out there. And they definitely would uh, love to have access to showers and laundry and Mm -hmm. all of that. So, yeah. uh, And the stories for how they end up in those situations are as varied as anybody's stories. I well, mean, that's why I don't really like the idea of, um, you know, the success story and mm-hmm. talking about how people prevailed through all of this trauma and junk because uh, it really doesn't address the root issue, which is just that there's a lack of choice and option for people. Yep. And I think that we're, we keep driving it back into that conversation every time we... Um, highlight some success story from someone who walked through mud. <laughs> right. And I mean, it's nice when, you know, when when somebody walks through mud and comes out the other side. Sure. And, you know, I mean, that's that's I'm nice glad thing. to have done it. Absolutely. Celebrate. Absolutely. That's that's fabulous. But that doesn't mean that the mud isn't harmful. <laughs> well, also does it? Well, I don't even think necessarily that they think it's not harmful. I think they think it's helpful. It builds character. Yeah, yeah. kind of like my friend who thinks that people should repay their student loans because it builds character. I knew, you know. I thought that yeah. you know, the whole time I was paying back half my student loans only to get halfway through after like 20 grand. Yeah. And people don't really character. understand <laughs> that when the deck is really stacked against you, that it's not building character to have to keep pushing that boulder up the hill, you know? It's it's yeah, not just wasting valuable life. Exactly. And and what could you be doing instead? I mean, that's that was the question that I wanted to ask my friend. It's like, okay, so you you held down two part-time jobs or three part-time jobs so that you could as well as going to school full-time so that you could pay this money back. What could you have been doing instead? Mm. What what productive thing? How could you have been changing the world for the better? Or your life. Or your life for the better. Yeah. Instead of spending all Probably the worst time. person to comment on that because I haven't been doing that. But no, it's it's but it's absolutely true. You know, we, it, we've got this this mindset about, you know, you have to be productive. You have to be productive and and you gotta, you know, I feel like you're pointing that at me. I was actually pointing it at me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I have Mm -hmm. to be productive. I mean, I I still think I have to be productive. If I if I spend a day not being productive, I don't feel good about that. What? (laughs) I was going to say your age. Maybe I just shouldn't. No, you're allowed to say at seventy four. Oh, I was going to give you a year. I I thought it was seventy three. Not quite seventy five. No, I thought you were the other way. No, no, no. I was going to give you one. No, I turned seventy four. So right at 74, I absolutely think I need to be productive every day. See, I was hoping that would, I was hoping I'd grow out of that. Were you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope not after it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So is there anything else going on that we should talk about? I mean, there's, well, well, I'll have to come back and give an update after we open some of the projects because that'll be exciting. probably going to be a lot then. But yeah, that'll be exciting. You have written millions of dollars in grants. Are you asking me? <laughs> uh, I was actually telling okay. you, <laughs> but um, but you could clarify that. So, so oh, the would... money is out there. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thing that people need to hear, yeah, is that the money is out there. I don't think I'm some anomaly or fascinating grant writer. I think that we just, people just haven't tried. And there are grants that are being offered that... Oh, if, there's there's one grant right now that I just wrote for about 600000 that we're the only ones writing for it, for Curry. What's it for? So... Um, a lot of things, case yeah. management mostly. Yeah. yeah. But six hundred thousand dollars. Uh huh. And and core is the only organization. Yeah, applying. so we're gonna get it. That is that's that happens a lot. Mm-hmm. And I had heard this before that, that there's money left on the table all the there time. There was like twenty grand for child care a couple of years ago that just um nobody wrote for, so it's just, it just was gone. And you know there are child care 
places. I know. I reached here. out to all of them. And I don't know. Grants are scary for people, I guess. I mean, they are, though. You know, it's, it's they are. Well, sure. Then you have to manage it. <laughs> then you have to report on it. And yeah, but it's not that big a deal. Oh, I've, but I've written now. I, I've not written really complex ones. And right. I'm always yeah. grateful when they say no reporting necessary. I'm oh, always yeah. really glad about that. Right. But, you know, it's a it's a program. You just. Yeah. Well, yeah, not so much. Not no. so much. Yeah. OK. Well, the bottom line is that the money is out there. It's money that was raised by our taxes mm -hmm. over the years. Sometimes not even taxes, sometimes just fees that we pay for right. normal construction of houses. And it's out there for the asking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, all you have to do is ask for it. And if we leave it on the table, I don't know whose fault that is. We just go 30 years without getting our money back. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's pretty, pretty ridiculous. All right. Well, it looks like we're just about out of time. I know Tom's going to have a fit because yeah. <laughs> I'm a little early going out, but I don't really have much more to say. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> Anything else to say? And I want to go enjoy this beautiful day because it is absolutely gorgeous outside. So I want to thank you, Diana, for making time to come on the show. It's always great to hear what's going on with CORE. It's nice to hear that the Gold Beach City Council is yeah. being proactive and is actually, you know, doing stuff. I, I remember thinking a couple of years ago that I wish our council would just listen a little bit to them. That's weird because I thought our council was like the more put together of the councils. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, no. <laughs> and yet, because I watched the Gold Beach Council a couple of times on uh, on Zoom meetings. Uh -huh. I, I, oh, I yeah, because pretty... they offer it on Zoom because they're accessible to people. Right. I forgot, which, yeah. Which we aren't, right? Yeah. You can't get us on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was fascinating to watch it. I thought they did a great job and they actually listened to each other, had had good you know what I did though I forgot that when you're up there you're supposed to be like all formal and I called Tammy Tammy instead oh. of Mayor Kaufman which she didn't say anything to me no. but she said something to somebody else so yeah yeah I thought that was nice that she did that she didn't say it to me well I I think when the, our previous council was seated it was more formal than it is now oh yeah I think they they run it a little bit looser now which is okay. I mean, you know, I don't I don't care who sets the tone. All right with me. <laughs> so anyway, yes, we will have you back and you can report on the interesting and exciting things that have been going on because God knows there will be lots of exciting sure. things. <laughs> and thank you for listening. There is always a solution that works for everyone. You just have to be willing to do the work to find it. It takes thinking, talking with other people, thinking some more and talking some more. But eventually, you end up with a solution that works for everyone with no one left out. I'm Candace Michelle, and this is Our Community. 